this prop nut is already just completely caked in uh, carbon. So could be a good symptom of a stuck open thermostat, how much of it's left. So uh, Leon had the boat out over the weekend. He picked up a bunch of his Boy Scout troop and went up the Cooper River through the locks to Lake Marion. And he said at one point he came down uh, off plane to idle and the starboard motor was idling rough again for about 10, 15 seconds. And he said, you know what? I'm not gonna let it die on me. And he got back up on plane and just kept on running. Only time he had the problem. Uh, so it looks like those gremlins are coming back on us. We'll dive into that problem uh, a little bit later and see if we can figure it out. But I got out the, uh, the laptop and the Yamaha diagnostic system, hooked it up to the motor. I looked at the engine hours. Uh, we knew it was 921 hours, but uh, take a look at, at this breakdown. Again, this is a Contender 31. This boat was designed to go 50 miles an hour and catch fish. We have 541 hours below 1,000 RPM, 231 hours below 2,000 RPM, and really, we only have 137 hours on plane, or I guess we'll add those eight in there. But 84% um, of the hours on this motor are off plane, at idle or, or fast idle. So uh, I don't know why you'd buy a contender to cruise or to put around the harbor. Uh, maybe they really like to drink beer and didn't want to spill anything, but the motor is basically brand new. So let's dive into the, uh, the idle issue. Or there's um, diagnostics. So we can go to the stationary test and we're gonna operate the ISC valve. That's the idle speed control valve and uh, ignition's off. So I removed the idle speed control valve to uh, see if there was any crazy carbon buildup on it or if it just didn't move at all and it looks good so I'm gonna run the test one more time so we uh, can, can show you what it sounds like so the idle speed control valve is cycling back and forth like it should um, that's not the problem We'll put the motor back together and uh, put some more hours on it. Maybe have the laptop with us and see if we can catch some uh, values when that problem happens. So stay tuned. All right, so yesterday we did the, um, the idle speed control valve test with the Yamaha diagnostic software. So that's the ISC with the YDS and everything checked out okay. So today, we're gonna pull the thermostat on this motor and take a look at it. Maybe the thermostat's stuck open and we're not getting quite enough flow through our fuel cooler. Again, we're just trying to troubleshoot why occasionally when you come off plane down to a fast idle, the starboard motor really kind of sputters. Um, Leon described it almost as a loping, like a you know supercharged motor. And uh, looking down at the propeller, so the um, exhaust comes through the propeller on these motors and there's this uh, black sooty stuff that's been down here and we pulled the prop off 20 hours ago of operation time and this prop nut is already just completely caked in uh, carbon. So could be a good symptom of a stuck open thermostat. Looks like it's a pain to get to, and we'll see how few parts we have to remove to take it off, but uh, we're gonna pull the thermostat and take a look at it. All right, so uh, thermostat is up here on this motor, and they fail open. And when they fail open, you have more flow through them, and uh, then the power head's not getting up to temperature. And I had a, an older Johnson motor, and when the thermostat was open, it had a weak stream out of the telltale and uh, since we know this is downstream of our fuel cooler uh, maybe by getting a thermostat that's not stuck open in here we'll have more flow through the fuel cooler maybe that's where we're getting some vaporization and that's what was causing the sputtering uh, it's just like the thermostat in your car um, opens and closes to maintain about 190 degrees 
your car. I'm not sure what the Yamaha is. I'll have to look at the service manual for that. Get our thermostat out, I hope. Gear wrench for that, 10 millimeter. Swivel socket's just a little too big. Or swivel gear wrench. All right, it's a tight fit, but it's able to get both of those screws out and our thermostat is kind of corroded in place. Yeah, so thermostat is in here. And I don't know if we can get the bottom. So once we pull it out, we'll give you a better view of, of what it looks like. But there's our thermostat housing and our thermostat back here. O ring or seal to just become one with whatever it was installed in. At this point, I'm committed to replacing the thermostat. Yeah, and for illustration purposes, I'm trying not to break this on during removal. It does not want to come out. Let's see if I can just get this housing out of the way. I suspect this is our temperature sensor. that out of the way. It looks like this hose has been leaking around the thermostat housing. So we should probably put a hose clamp on here instead of a little zip tie when we reassemble it. So this is um, just 20 years of salt buildup and corrosion. Um, you can see it coming out of the top of the connection. So we will definitely put a hose clamp on that instead of a zip tie. Now have better access to our thermostat. And it looks like our thermostat wasn't actually bad. Um, so this is in the closed position and this is open. We're replacing it anyway. All right, so I've got the thermostat in a coffee cup full of scalding hot water. Um, it's supposed to open at about 150 or maybe it was 153 degrees. Uh, it's supposed to be open and uh, it's supposed to have a, a gap of four millimeters or minimum. So I measured this opening uh, and it's just right at 2.8 millimeters. So the thermostat isn't operating anymore. It was this it was 2.8 millimeters before we put it in scalding hot water and it didn't change at all. So um, I'm going to go down to Henkel Marine and get four new thermostats this afternoon, two for this motor and two for the, uh, the port motor. All right, so yesterday afternoon, I uh, went to Hankel and, and got some new thermostats. There's our part number. And uh, let's compare the, the old to the new. So the new and the old, it's clear that the old thermostat was stuck open and that uh, would help explain why we've got the uh, the soot in our exhaust and this is a v6 motor so it actually has another thermostat over on the other other side we're going to seal up this side put our new thermostat in and then we're going to tackle removing the thermostat on the other side and i suspect it's going to be stuck open just like this uh, our port motor also has some carbon in the exhaust or soot whatever you want to call it so i got two new thermostats for that motor. So four thermostats are going in today and uh, hopefully that'll clean up our, our soot issue. And there was quite a bit of uh, salt buildup and corrosion around the, the, end of the seal of our old thermostat. So I scraped all that out and we had uh, some buildup around the, the hose. So I scraped most of that off and we're gonna put a band clamp on, hose clamp and hopefully seal that more than just the zip tie that was there. So new thermostat's gonna go in and then um, get this hose clamp on and put some grease on our screws and reassemble all that.
So we have now replaced the thermostat on the starboard side of our Yamaha F225 and let's move over to the port. Uh, there's quite a bit more in the way that we're going to have to unplug, disconnect and move out of the way to get to the, the mounting bolts. All right, so our thermostat is back behind all of this. So I'm going to do what I can to swing this out of the way and get access to those bolts. I'm going to have to unhook some sensors and unplug some sensors and take it one part at a time. So in theory we're going to pull out these 3M10 screws and then we can push this whole um, idle air control valve out of the way. Whether that actually happens or not is to be determined. Got three screws here. Probably not good practice to put hardware on top of the flywheel, but that's within reach. Alright, we have two shorts in the front and one long in the back. Oh, there's a major bulge on this hose. So down here, this is, you can see the normal diameter and then this gigantic bulge. Um, I don't know if it's just gotten hot and melted or if that's all salt buildup behind the, the hose and the thermostat housing. We'll tear it apart and find out. You want to be careful not to drop any hardware down that hole. Um, I dropped one of the screws for our idle air control down there and got to buy a new one because no telling where it went. There we go. Alright, so I've got both screws out. And then this thermostat is also stuck open. Let's see, right in, right in here. That should be shut, but it's stuck open. And there it is. That thing is gummed up pretty nasty. Stuck open. So now I'm going to try to yank this uh, thermostat housing off of the hose and get this mess cleaned up. I mean, it swole up so much that it broke the the hose clamp that was, or the uh, wire tie that was on there. I don't know if this is going to come out or not. If we didn't have twins, it'd be easy to get down to the bottom and disconnect it, but this is going to be next to impossible to remove. So that is nasty. Uh, we can probably clean it up and get it back together. Um, I'll see uh, how much of it's left once I start chipping all that away. Just using some uh, pliers to grind away all that build up. Now I'll follow it up with a brass brush or copper br bristle brush. We should be okay reusing this housing. There's still, uh, I think, enough material left that be able to get a hose clamp on it. All right, so there's a pretty good chunk missing out of this thermostat housing. Um, a new one is $94, and I don't have it here at the shop. So I'm just going to put some RTV on here and let it uh, set for a few minutes and jam it in and put a hose clamp on it and we'll know real soon when we start this motor up if it's leaking or not if it's not leaking we'll let it ride we should be good so we're just going to put some uh, some silicone RTV on here and let it um, set up for a minute and then reassemble this with a hose clamp we should be able to get a hose clamp on here and, and seal it up if it leaks, we'll um, we'll see it. It'll be pretty obvious, and we'll just replace it then. So here we go, back together.
uh, RTV is room temperature vulcanizing is what it stands for so it will harden at room temperature and this just is what we had um, from another project this oil will be fine with salt water but we're gonna let this uh, set up for a minute or two I'm gonna get a hose clamp and then we'll put this all back together hopefully it doesn't fall too far yeah, it's had a little bit of time to set up That is really loose. Mm. The corrosion was holding everything together. This is what we're working with here. We've got a big band clamp on the hose with some uh, RTV underneath of it. And I'm confident once all that sets up, it's not going to leak on us. We'll uh, take the boat out for a cruise here in a couple days and check on it. Now we just need to get all this stuff back in place. <laughs> back. Now I just need to find uh, a zip tie and tie this back down and snug everything down and we're um, ready to put the cover on and move on to our next motor. Alright, so we finished uh, replacing our thermostats on both motors out of the four. Three of them were stuck open, so glad we went ahead and looked into that. Uh, it was something we should have done probably when we first got the boat, but replaced all four of them and uh, hopefully we're going to have less carbon buildup coming out of the exhaust. Maybe that'll solve our random idle issue on the starboard motor. Uh, while we were in there on the port motor, we replaced the um, start relay, uh, Leon had it a couple, uh, had it stick on him a couple times. He had to turn the switch maybe five times to get the motor to start. So we went ahead and replaced that. And we went ahead and replaced the uh, fuel filters under the cowling. Um, Should have replaced them back when we got the boat. Uh, there was some gunk in there, not too bad. The uh, the big fuel water separators I guess caught most of that but about done with the motors let's uh, get back to the live well so we can go fishing so uh, you know this is our first time looking at the prop nuts since we replaced our thermostats we ran um, about 100 gallons th through the boat on Monday and there really is not much soot on this prop nut so there's a little bit that's probably residual from our thermostat still being broken but I mean this whole inner hub area was black so replacing the thermostats definitely cleaned that up and our temperature gauges on the dash work I just thought it was some bad wiring but uh, instead of being pegged all the way at cold it was maybe a quarter of the way up so thermostats did the trick <laughs> 